Good evening, warriors of the Most High God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Soldiers in battle. Are you in battle? Amen, because if you're not in battle, you become a casualty. We see that on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. You know, today I was ministering into the jail. And one of the things I, when I went in there, I shared, uh, I said, you know why you're, you're in jail? And they all looked at me, and I, I said, do you really know why you're in jail? And they said, why are we in jail? I said, because you've been draft dodgers. <laughs> you've been dodging the draft of God. You know, he's drafted you into his kingdom. And when you try to dodge his draft, you go into prison. And, you know, you may not be in the jail, jail, but you go into this prison called bondage. Would you turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 17? <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't be a draft dodger. Glory to God. Revelation 17. <laughs> and verse 1. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me, please? Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, that the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on the scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Babylon is a representation of the world system. It's a representation of Satan's kingdom. If you notice, she was dressed in the precious stones of the earth. One of the reasons why she was dressed with the precious stones of the earth is because the world system controls man by money. And one of the things that happened in, with Satan because he, when God created Lucifer, he was beautiful. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. And he was dressed with precious stones of the earth and timbrels where music played through him. And when Lucifer rebelled against God, God not only stripped him of his position, but he also stripped him of the precious stones. He no longer was covered with the precious stones. He was now a serpent. <laughs> Is everybody okay? So he lost the precious stones. He lost that covering. He was now covered with darkness. And in this, the harlot of Babylon is associated with the world system. Its covering is the wealth of the earth. In Revelation 18, in verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons. So you must understand that the world system is the dwelling place 
of demons. A prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. So you got to look at this in a spiritual arena. The world Babylon is this world system. It is run by Satan's kingdom. It's the same thing. Babylon is Satan's kingdom. It is a harlot. It causes people to drink of the things of fornication. In verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth had committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. The reason why it's about fornication is because fornication is associated with a, a like, you know, fornicating sin, leaving their God, and becoming one with a harlot. In verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. Come out of this world system. Come out of her. <clears throat> My people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she re rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. Again, the wealth of the earth is controlled by Satan's kingdom. He controls the citizens of Babylon by purchasing with the power of wealth. In a physical realm. Does everybody understand that? And the power of fear in the spiritual realm. So there's a purchasing power of wealth in the physical realm. And there's the power of fear in the spiritual realm. Babylon resists godly government. By enforcing a false belief system called religion. That imposes carnal philosophies. Promoting intellectual self. It manipulates the thoughts of its citizens. Through false revelations. By psychics and witchcraft. Promoting idolatry practices. Lust. Immorality. Dishonesty. Greed and evil intentions, causing rebellion, confusion, and separation from God because of sin, and manifesting an independent spirit. Is everybody with me? <laughs> I know that was a lot. I guess I need to repeat it. Get the tape. No. <laughs> Babylon, again, resists godly government by enforcing a false belief system called religion that imposes carnal philosophies. You know, there's a lot of philosophies out there, huh? Promoting intellectual self. It manipulates the thoughts of its citizens through false revelations by psychics and witchcraft, false revelations, also by familiar spirits. It promotes idolatrous practices, lust, immorality, dishonesty, greed, and evil intentions causing rebellion causes rebellion, confusion, and separation of God because of sin. And it manifests an independent spirit. The controlling factor that it has is invoked in the area of the media, 
economics and politics. And all these are its dominating forces for control. But I'm going to tell you right now that there is a shift of power, and when there's a shift of power, there's a shift of wealth. When there is a shift of power, there is a shift of wealth. Again, Lucifer was once covered by precious stones of the earth, and he was stripped and turned into a spectacle of God's judgment because of his rebellion. The same thing that happened to Lucifer happened to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were covered. Lucifer was covered with the precious stones. Adam and Eve was covered with the glory of God. Adam and Eve were stripped of their covering for rebellion. But God recovered them with the animal skin by the sacrifice of an animal. But he did not cover Lucifer. Amen? Who is now Satan. Satan still covers himself with worldly wealth. That's the only way he can cover himself. And he utilizes that to control mankind. Is everybody okay? Go to Genesis 11. Genesis chapter 11. Hallelujah. Genesis 11 and verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, let, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us what? Make a name for ourselves. This is known as the Tower of Babel. The purpose of Babel or Babylon is to and its citizens is always to make a name for oneself. It says, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Babylon, the world system and its citizens' major agenda is to make a name of self. In verse 5. It says, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they cease building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. God used confusion to stop an in independence of self and caused a scatter. Because their purpose was to build a name for themselves. So you've got to begin to realize that when you and I were born into this realm, our whole focus and purpose was to build a name for ourselves. We have been told that if we must become something. Amen? I, from the moment that you were little in your house or wherever you were, you were told that you must become something. And if you didn't live up to the expectations, you were nothing. 
And even if somebody didn't say that you were nothing, it was impressed in you that you must become something or what you might call independent. And if you didn't reach that independence goal, you were considered nothing, according to the Babylonian system or the world system. Is everybody okay? So people would look to things to try to cover because it was a false shame on them. It was a false guilt. And the enemy would put us into slavery and try to control us in this arena because we had not fulfilled expectations according to the world system. Is everybody all right? Are you getting this? So in this, it would bring an area of bondage. And the enemy loves it. See, because you and I are already something, that's why we came into this realm. <laughs> so when people try to cover things up, they turn to alcohol. They turn to drugs. They turn to pornography. They turn to all kinds of things to try and bring a fulfillment in their life to remove the guilt of not fulfilling the expectations of the world system. And it causes us, because we go into these areas of sin, separation from God. But see, because we were born blind, we didn't realize these things. Our whole focus was the area of we must become somebody to fulfill the expectations of the world system. And God used a very powerful weapon to stop the building of Babylon the tower and that weapon is called confusion are you listening we'll go here so how do you disarm Babylon in your life with the weapon of what confusion David used it God used it and you and I must start to use it now you know that the enemy uses it on us too amen Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Hallelujah. Psalm 35. In verse 4. Now we'll start at four. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's read it together. 35, verse 4. Let those be put to shame and brought to what? Dishonor who seek after my life. Now this is David's prayer to the Lord. Let those be turned back and brought to what? Confusion. Who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them how many of y'all know that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them for without cause they have hidden their net f for me in a pit which they have dug without cause for my life let destruction come upon him unexpectedly and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction let him what let him fall David used the weapon of prayer to activate the weapon of confusion where there is confusion there is fear I want you to grab hold of this now where there is confusion there is what fear where there is fear there is intimidation Where there's intimidation, there is doubt and unbelief. Unfortunately, the enemy uses the same weapon upon the believers of Christ. Again, where there is confusion, there is delusion. Where there is confusion, there's what? Delusion. Go to Psalm 60.
Psalm 60. <clears throat> And verse 1, let's read it. So where there's confusion, there's also what? Delusion. And, and, and the reason for that is because where there's confusion, it means that there's lack of understanding, there's lack of wisdom there. The enemy brings his confusion and he comes to steal what, he's, what God has imparted in an individual. And then when there's that confusion, it brings a false belief system. And then that causes your perception to be flawed. So you can't perceive correctly. The only thing you want to do is fight for your life instead of surrender it. In Psalm 60 and verse 1, O oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. O oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the what? Wine of confusion. In other words, they drank of the wine of fornication. It's the same thing. Why? Because it brings what? Confusion. It brings what? Delusion. You have given a banner to those who fear you that it may be displayed because of truth. That your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. A cry. They drank of the confusion. They were defeated in battle and didn't understand why. In James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Hallelujah. The weapon of confusion. I pray it daily. Lord, snare my enemies in their own nets. Bring confusion in their camp. I remember going to a court for somebody one day, or many days. And before we went in there, I began to pray, Lord, bring confusion in this courtroom. Bring confusion in this courtroom and set us free. And it, <laughs> there was so much confusion in that courtroom. It was incredible. The judge was so frustrated because the attorneys, the prosecuting attorneys couldn't find anything. They were, I mean, they, everything was just disarrayed. The judge was just, dismiss, dismiss, just throwing everybody out of there. He was, you know why? Because he was angry with the prosecuting attorneys because they were in so much confusion. And I've seen people that were facing 20 and 30 years walk out of that courtroom. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. If you're right with God, heaven's behind you. If you're not right with God, hell's in front of you. James chapter 3. <laughs> and verse 13. <laughs> is everybody there? Let's read this together. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. Wisdom tells you what to do. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So if there's confusion there, there's delusion there. That means their perceptions are not according or falling in the line of what God wants you to perceive. They're incorrect. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to what? 
Yield, that means submit to the things of God. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, you see self-seeking and envy. There is confusion in every evil thing. Lack of knowledge and understanding will allow confusion. The enemy will use that to attack us. We must counterattack with the same weapon, calling confusion in the enemy's camp. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Anybody remember the three P's of weapons? Prayer, praise, and proclamation. If you notice that all of those things come out of the mouth. Why? Because it's the sword of the Spirit. Spirit meaning breath. And it is the ministry of the Spirit. So prayer, praise, and proclamation are three weapons that are used to activate God's weapons. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 20. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. In verse 21. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. Now King Joseph, Jehoshaphat <laughs> was going to be attacked on every side from militaries. And it was totally impossible for him to fight and win this war physically. So he called an assembly of everyone and they began to pray and they fasted. And the Lord sent word to them that they didn't have to worry about it, that the Lord would be with them. But he did give them a strategy. And in verse 21, it says, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were what? Saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So these individuals are out praising God before the army. So the praise and worship team was before the army. The army was not before the praise and worship team. Come on. Why? Because what's going to activate weapons? Prayer, praise, and proclamation. So the praise and worship team were before the army. The praise and worship was protecting the army. In verse 22, and it says, When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set what? Ambushes against the people of Ammon. These are who they were fighting against. Moab, Mount Seir who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy what? One another. God sent confusion in the enemy's camp where everybody killed each other. Why? Because they activated the weapons of God, and that weapon, by activating it by praise, was called the weapon of confusion. That's why the devil don't want you to sing. That's why he don't want you to pray. That's why he don't want you to make proclamations. He wants to keep confusion in your camp, so the only thing you're concerned about is you. And then he causes you to try to fight in the flesh. Try to figure it out in the flesh. Try to fight carnally or soulishly. Now look at this in verse 20. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth, and no one had escaped. So nobody threw a stone. Nobody shot an arrow. They sang all the way. And God brought confusion in the enemy's camp. They killed one another. Now, if they killed one another, that means that there was, when Judah got there, that means that there was a power shift, wasn't there? 
Okay, let's look at the next verse. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Where there's a shift of power, there's a shift of wealth. Where there's a shift of power, there's a shift of wealth. Hallelujah. <laughs> so King Jehoshaphat utilized, he started off with prayer, then he went to praise, and then he went to proclamation. And it brought confusion in the enemy's camp. And it caused a shift of power and a shift of wealth. Is everybody okay? And Matthew 16. Hallelujah. So quit crying out to God and start praying, praising, and proclaiming. Amen? Oh, Lord. Well, I guess sometimes it's a good start. Then start praising. <laughs> Hallelujah. Start proclaiming. Yes, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Lord, I call confusion in the enemy's camp. I'm calling destructive fire down upon every altar of Satan. Man, we got a four call to be. Isn't our purpose? Is to what? Destroy Satan's kingdom. That's our purpose. That's why you've been rescued. And God has given us the weapons. In Matthew 16, in verse 18, hallelujah. 16, 18. Is everybody there? <clears throat> Let's start at uh, 17 here. Because Jesus asked them, who do they say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. And Jesus answers him in verse 17. And he says, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But who? My Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock or revelation that I am the Christ, the anointed one, I'm going to build my church with the anointing. And I will build my church on the anointing. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. These are the keys of the kingdom. That's a part of your military weapons, binding and loosening. Is everybody with me? The keys are to bind and loose. Amen? Not using these keys is a lack of knowledge. Which... Knowledge is a key itself. Confusion is banished by consistence and discipline. Consistency and discipline. Why? Because by being consistent, you're always being reminded. Has everybody got it? By being disciplined, that means you're not going by how you feel. You're doing it because you know it pleases God. Listen, every morning you must get up and attack. I didn't say you had to feel like it. Believe me, if the whole world didn't have to work, do you think they would? I mean, they'd rather just go out and play. Amen? <laughs> but we have to get up in the morning. No sleepy in. Wakey up. Because no worky, no E.T. <laughs> so f confusion in your life, which, is which will bring fear, and the enemy will come in and cause you to bring delusion, will cause you to have a perception that is flawed. 
and it will bring you under the belief system of Babylon, which is religion. And it brings bondage. Why? Because most people have their own belief system in Babylon. It's what I believe. It's not what God believes. Are you listening? See, Babylon is associated with I. This is what I believe. Yes, I read the word in the way I want to interpret it. That's because there's confusion. And there's delusion and false perception. And it puts sin in an individual and separation from God. And let me tell you who shows up. Familiar spirits. And they love to imitate the Holy Ghost. And they love to give you goosebumps. They know exactly how to imitate the Holy Spirit. Because of the false, the flawed belief system and the flawed perception, the individual cannot tell the difference. And they would put their life down to say that God spoke to them. But they won't get confirmation of whether it was God or not. Because of fear. See, where there's fear, there's confusion. Has everybody got it? Amen? Where there's fear, there's confusion. And where there's confusion, there's delusion. Oh, glory. So when this happens, one of the things that we've got to do is banish this by being consistent and disciplined and using our three Ps. We're to make no place for confusion, but call it in your enemy's camp. Amen? Amen? When man comes under confusion, it causes an ungodly timing. An ungodly timing, and the person is unstable. It moves an individual out of God's time. And it causes the individual to be unstable. Man, you know people that are unstable. You know that they say one thing and they do another. Amen? Because confusion is still in their life. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. The weapon of confusion. Hey, if my dad used it to bring down Babylon, how about us? Just don't let the enemy use it on you. First, I mean, first, James chapter 1. First James chapter 1. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Lift your hands to heaven and get a drink. Hallelujah. In verse 2, would you read it with me? My brethren, count it all joy when you, when, when, I say when, not if, when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So why do you fall in various trials to be tested? Now remember, trials are opportunities for growth and maturity. They're, all trials are opportunities. Amen? Everything you're going through is an opportunity. Now, if you're walking correctly, you'll turn it into an opportunity. Amen? Amen? Why? Because you're going to need wisdom. Watch this. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom tells you what to do, let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Now, where there's doubt, there's fear, isn't there? Where there's fear, there's confusion. And then there's usually unbelief. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. That's why a person is inconsistent, unstable. Unstable. Why? Because the enemy has brought confusion in the person's life. 
And now this person, because there's confusion, there's delusion, and there's false perception, begins to look to the world for fulfillment and not even realize it because the familiar spirits are now running their life. They have now replaced the Holy Spirit because they've opened themselves up. They are inconsistent. They are tossed to and fro, and they are unstable. The only thing that they are loyal to is the things of the world. They'll be sure they show up at work because there's a reward of money. They'll be sure that they'll show up at the party. <laughs> they'll be, are you listening? But to be consistent in the things of fellowship and the things of God that he's asked them to do, they cannot be because of confusion. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Trials are opportunities for growth, maturity, and trust. This is where we can increase in the things of God. Without godly wisdom, we will be confused. Amen? We will be confused and we will manifest a false belief system causing our perception to become incorrect, resulting in instability and double-mindedness. If the Tower of Babel was brought down by confusion, so can we, if we are lacking wisdom. Amen? You know, many people fall out of certain position of God because of the lack of wisdom or the lack of consistency and discipline. Turn to Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. Hallelujah. Uh, is everybody okay? Are you getting this? <clears throat> Isaiah 24 and verse 4. Let's read this together. Isaiah 24 and verse 4. The earth mourns and fades away. The world... Is everybody there? The world languages, languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the law, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. Why was that? Confusion. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. The new wine fails, the vine languishes, and the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine ceases. The noise of the tumult, um, jubilant ends. The joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of what? Confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city of Desolation is left, and the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. Confusion. Confusion resists. I want to please grab hold of this. Confusion resists true revelation. It will cause an individual to resist true revelation because they're looking for their own fulfillment of their desire. Confusion will resist true revelation. Did you ever try to speak to somebody in confusion? They can't hear. They can't hear. They can't get it. Confusion resists true revelation, but accepts false revelation because of the flawed perception has nullified clarity. There's not the clarity anymore. It's false. Is everybody all right? 
Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Confusion resists true revelation, but accepts false revelation because of false perception and is nullified clarity. Isaiah 41 and verse 26. Let's read this together. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know, and former times that we may say he is righteous? Surely there is no one who shows. Surely there is no one who declares. Surely there is no one who hears your words. The first time I said to Zion, look, there they are. And I will give to Jerusalem one who brings good tidings. For I looked and there was no man. I looked among them, but there was no counselor who, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Indeed, they are all worthless. Their works are nothing. Their molded images are wind and what? And what? Confusion. Why? Because idols, idols in people's life cause confusion. They are known as accursed items. They cause confusion. They bring confusion. Uh, and also, confusion can also turn a person to an idol. Amen? Idols. People have idols in their lives. Anything that is between you and God is an idol. Anything. Yourself, your children, your families, your jobs, your money. Anything that is between you and God is an idol. And it will bring confusion. Is everybody all right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The weapon of confusion. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll start at verse 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means so that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who is Satan, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. So who's restraining right now Satan's kingdom? We are. The body of Christ. We are. Once we're off this planet, all hell will break loose. And verse 7. For the, mystery, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until... He is taken out of the way. That's us, the body of Christ. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. With the breath of his what? So if he uses his mouth, don't you think we need to use ours? And destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. In other words, he's going to implement confusion, isn't he? And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they what? They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them what? 
strong delusion. Well, where there's deception, there's what? Delusion. That they should believe the lie. So God is going to do the same thing as he did with the Tower of Babel. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. God will send confusion to promote delusion and rebellion against truth because they rejected the truth. They rejected the love of the truth. They rejected God. And I want to close in Proverbs 2. Simple, sweet, and short. Just for you, Al. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 2 is just for you. And verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Let's read this together. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, you will not fall into confusion. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as what? Silver and search for her for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright he is a shield to those who walk uprightly he guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints then you will understand righteousness and justice equity in every good path when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul discretion will preserve you understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil from the man who speaks perversity, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, consistency, discipline, prayer, praise, proclamation. These are all areas that will keep you and activate the weapons of God. Everything has been given to us. There is no excuse. None. We don't have an excuse. Everything is available. God said, I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. On that table is every weapon you need. Every weapon. That's why we have a war room. You're just loading up. Sometimes you just have to reload. Amen? <laughs> but you got to use them. You can't allow the devil to put your own sock in your own mouth. You must use them. Prayer, praise, proclamation, consistency, and discipline. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's time because there's a shift of power and if there's a shift of power, there's a shift of wealth. And if you're not in position while well, there's a shift of power, you will miss the shift of power yourself and miss the shift of wealth in your life. And it's just not financial blessings. It's about revelations of wealth. The greatest wealth you can have is revelations from God to know that he's there with you. Amen? Praise God. Remember, it's not God in our life. It's we're in his life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we give you all praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for your word. And we ask again for your forgiveness in those areas where we have fallen and allowed the enemy to bring confusion in our life. Quicken us, Holy Spirit, to activate the weapon so that we may activate confusion in our enemy's camp. 
that they may kill each other. And we're just going to take the spoil. <laughs> we thank you for the weapon of confusion in the enemy. And we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.